Hey YouTube, it's Charlie from Reader Trend Writer, and today I am doing a book review of the writing craft book Mastering Suspense, Structure, and Plot by Jane K. Cleland. I didn't have a lot of expectations going into this book, but I had heard that it works well with Save the Cat in that it talked more about side characters and plots, and so I was interested in that. I honestly can't say that I got a lot out of it for that but I did feel that it was overall had good information in it. The biggest thing for me was that it didn't feel focused enough. I wish that instead of doing suspense structure and plot she had just done suspense. I think it would have been a better book uh, for me and what I was looking for, but I did feel that the information in the book about suspense was well done. So I'll dive into what I liked most about the book and then I'll talk about more in depth about kind of my problems with the book. It was kind of an average 3, 3.5 star rating for me. When I was reading the book, I have to admit, at the very beginning she talks about hooks, and I will link my video about hooks up there, whichever side, where hooks are basically just where you take something that is standard and you add an unexpected twist to it, because that we, as humans, we love the familiar, but we also love to be surprised. And so basically you can't write something new, but you can write a hook. You can take something that's been done well and do a twist that hasn't been done before, technically. Maybe. Anyways, so I instantly liked the book because she was talking about hooks and describing them. She didn't use the word hook, but she was describing them, and I was like, yay! I'm just gonna read on page four the, the foundation of suspense because I thought that she did a really good job of explaining what suspense is. So basically, suspense is when your readers know something is happening, or might happen to characters they care about, but they don't know what it is. So that's the foundation of suspense. And I really liked that explanation. And I really liked the way that she talked about suspense all throughout the book. So one thing she talked about was making sure that when you're trying to add suspense that you're drawing on things that you've already established, and especially like character traits that you've already established. If you can use those to the, the things that you've already established to create suspense, then the suspense will be more heightened because we as as readers will care more. She did talk about subplots, so here's where she talked about subplots, is how subplots should serve a purpose. They shouldn't be a detour to your actual plot, they should enhance your plot. And so everything everything that you add should support your plot even if it's a, si a subplot, even if it's a side thing. It shouldn't feel like you're like, here's the main plot, here's a side thing. It should feel like the, the side thing is drawn into the main thing. I'm not explaining it. That's not how she explains it in the book. But she she talks about, that's, that's one of the things that she talks about with subplots. And so she does go into a little bit more depth with subplots, but not a ton. I'll get into that later though. One thing that she spent a lot of time talking about is how isolation can increase tension or cause tension. It was really interesting to me. And she, she says physical isolation or or social isolation. So like physical isolation being alone in a haunted house. Or, you know, social social isolation, you know, like bullies picking on someone. They feel like they don't have any friends and that can create a different kind of tension. And it was interesting to me, it, it's kind of like, like that's a cool idea to me. It It's definitely not a, and she doesn't say this in the book, but it's definitely not a if you're isolated there will be tension because obviously you can be alone and there can be no tension but you can use the isolation to enhance or create tension when otherwise there wouldn't be and she had quite a few examples for that and i loved the way that the examples for that were presented another thing that she spent a lot of time talking about was red herrings and i loved that section she goes more in depth about red herrings than most of the things she does in the book and she gives like different categories of red herrings and how you might use them in different situations, which was really useful and applicable. And then another thing I really loved was when she talked about surprise. And she talked about tension versus surprise and gave the example of the bomb under the table, which I absolutely love that example. I think that it is so useful. The idea is if you have four people at a table talking and a bomb goes off, then you'll, you'll feel like an instance of surprise. But if you show the bomb, if we know the bomb is under the table and the time's ticking down and they're sitting around the table talking, then the whole five minutes that they're talking, we're sitting there, oh my gosh, the bomb is going to go off, you got to get out of the house. What is, you know, you're waiting for them either to get out or for the bomb to explode and you're waiting for that release of the tension. And so then you have a whole lot more emotion throughout that than just the one instant surprise of the bomb going off. And she talked a lot about that and she said that you can use surprise sometimes, but you want to use it really sparingly. And when you use it, you want it to 
you want to use it in order to introduce a new situation that will create tension. So basically, you can use surprise sometimes as long as it's creating tension afterwards. So you can have the tension before the leading up to it, and then instead of having a surprise, you have the tension leading up to the bomb under the table, right? Or the bomb under the table then creates a situation which puts your main character into a tense situation where we're like feeling the... it's not tension, is it? But feeling the tension, feeling the conflict, you know, of the situation and we're like, ah! And I really liked that idea too. So those are kind of the main things. It's kind of a short book. So those are kind of the main things that she talked about that I really liked and went more in depth. Even though I really liked the information in the book, and I would probably recommend it if you are interested in learning suspense, if you know of a really good book on suspense, let me know because I am in the market. I'm really interested in suspense currently. It's something that I am really interested in learning more about and how to really, like, really applicably, applicably, is that a word? Apply it to my, to my own writing and how, and like, actually learn how to concretely use suspense and draw out the suspense, because I think suspense is really important in all books, not just um, mysteries and thrillers, which she talks more about mysteries because she writes mysteries, and I actually want to try one of her mysteries, I think it would be fun. The main thing that I didn't love about it, like I said before, is it didn't feel focused enough. It kind of jumped around, it like would touch surface level areas, or it would go from a big picture thing. In one instance, she's talking about the surprise versus suspense and tension and everything, and I felt that felt very big picture craft to me. And then all of a sudden she jumped to language choice and like what words you pick to put in your sentences, and it felt very unrelated, and it was jarring to me because I was like, this is kind of like a line editing type thing that she's talking about right now, which can strengthen your writing, don't get me wrong, it's just that it didn't feel like it fit in her book. And then all of a sudden she jumped again to big picture stuff. It just didn't feel cohesive. It kind of felt like she sat down and then instead of being like, okay, I'm going to talk about suspense and the different tools that I use and give a lot of examples for it, she was like, okay, I'm just going to write down everything that helps me write a book and then put it into a book. And I, I don't know, it just, it felt like it jumped around a lot and like inside different chapters it was like there were sections where I was like, how does this relate to what she was just talking about because this feels totally different and not just like a different topic. It just felt weird to me. It like didn't flow very well. And some of the topics didn't feel like they fit in her book and I wish that she didn't have them in there, like the sentence structure or like she was talking about points of view and I was like, this is like really basic. 101 stuff and I want to learn more about suspense. I already know about points of view, I already know about structuring my novel, and it didn't feel like the points of view actually related to suspense, so then I was wondering how it was all connected as I was reading it. That was really the only thing that I didn't love about this book, and so I thought the information was good. I probably, I don't know, I, I'm debating trying her other one. She has another book that talks about plot twists. And I'm wondering if it's maybe more focused because it has a very specific topic where this is just kind of like, you could fit a lot of things under structure and plot versus suspense. And so I guess I was just hoping that it was more of a focus on suspense than structure and plot, but she talked quite a bit about all three of them and it didn't always feel super related to me. But if you want to learn more about suspense, I do think that this has good information in it and it's a fairly quick read, it's very accessible writing and I did enjoy her voice in the book, and I would say give it a go if you think that you want to learn more about suspense. Just know that it has other things in there too that might not be as useful if you're not a beginner. Like, like if you already know about points of view and you know linear versus non-linear structure and things like that, she goes into it. And I do wish she had gone more in depth too, because I was left wanting more. But that's why I'm considering picking up her other book, because I wonder if she goes more in depth there. If you've read it, let me know in the comments below. If you've read this book, let me know what you think of it in the comments below. I would love to hear, even if you liked it more than I did and disagreed, or absolutely hated it, I would love to hear your thoughts about it. If you haven't read this one, then let me know what your favorite craft book is because I want to read a whole bunch of craft books basically and then talk about them here on my channel. So yeah, I would love to hear what your favorite one is in, is in the comments below. My favorite is still Save the Cat Writes a Novel by Jessica Brody and it's obviously a really popular one so 
I'm not alone there. Next month, I will be talking about Art and Fear by David Bales and Ted Orland, and I've heard that this is not as much of a writing craft book, but more of like a book for creatives, and so I'm really interested in reading this one and excited to read it. So if you want to read along so that you can uh, discuss it with me in the comments below, then you can read this during the next month, or if you want to wait and see if it's worth picking up, then uh, you can make sure to subscribe so you can see when it comes up next month and look out for that video. If you liked this video, don't forget to hit that thumbs up and subscribe for lots of writing content, other craft book reviews, chat videos, vlogs, and thank you so much for watching my video. I will see you in the next one.